if somebody disappears, there's a good reason for that, and other people do not want them found. We go to the edge of the world, to really some of the most extreme locations on Earth, following in the footsteps of other people who went to these locations but didn't come home. We ask hard questions, we dig around, and try to figure out what happened to them and tell their story. We have cases from the 1930s. We have cases that are as recent as five months. Some of them are cold cases. Some of them are active and open cases. So the first thing that we do before we go is we spend weeks, sometimes months on research. And then the most interesting part, of course, is when you get there and you go boots on the ground. And that is always, for me especially, what really breaks the case open. Being physically in the space where these people were last seen, that puts you in a, in a mindset that helps you to understand possibly what they were thinking, how they were feeling, how external factors like the environment might have impacted them. And then once we're there, we start talking to people. Very often we get to speak to the families, to law enforcement, to people who are actually involved in the case, to then putting all the puzzle pieces together and then putting it out into the world. We talk to so many different people. We talk to mothers of people who've lost their children. And when you go into an interview like that, you have to have tremendous empathy because these are heartbreaking stories and you could easily destroy an interview if you're insensitive and you're not gonna get critical information. And then on the other extreme, you're talking to people who might have been the murderers and their stories just do not add up. And with these cases, you have to be a little bit clever. You have to go in as somebody a little bit aloof, let them run. And then when you know you've got them, you pull that rod back. Most often I would say a lack of concrete evidence. In a lot of these cases, all we know is that someone went off into a particular area, never came back, and in many of our cases, nothing was ever found. When you have nothing to go on, you really at that point start to gravitate towards getting into the headspace of this person, what they might have been thinking, what they might have been feeling. We do run into resistance from authorities. And the fact is that it doesn't matter what country you're in, it doesn't matter who the authorities are, there are good people and there are bad people everywhere. In some cases, the authorities are willing and ready to help and give us all the information that we could possibly ever want. And in some cases, they want nothing more than just to get us the heck out of there. If I could give one piece of advice is have an open mind. When I started doing this work, I was very rigid, very scientific, very much a person of reason. If it didn't make sense to me, then it did not happen. However, the more people that I met whose beliefs were different from my own, the more I realized I need to take that seriously. By doing that, these individuals opened up to me more. Maybe they liked me a little bit more. They were gonna give me more information. And more critically than that, I got a window into their mindset. So if I could give one piece of advice of how you could be a better investigator, it's to have an open mind. Because if you go into any case and you think you know exactly what happened to that person, I guarantee you, you're gonna be wrong. <laughs>